We would like to thank our sponsors, Getaway Today. Use Getaway Today for all of your vacation planning needs. You'll get exclusive perks, great discounts, and the best customer service. Most importantly, their services are always free and easy from experienced and passionate agents who love to make your vacation dreams come true. Head on over to getawaytoday.com from the link in our show notes to see their exclusive deals and you can call 855-GETAWAY and let them know Walt's apartment sent you to start planning your next vacation today. There was an idea. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people see if they could become something more i have an army we have a hulk this is the marvel tribe brought to you by waltz apartment podcast and the diz insider avengers assemble Hey everyone and welcome to the Marvel Tribe. We're a group of excited and passionate individuals who have come together to share our love of all things Marvel. We are brought to you by Walt's Apartment Podcast and TheDizInsider.com. My name is Sean and I'm joined by an amazing group of people. We have Sam and David with us tonight. From the big screen to the small print, feel the pulse in your chest so you know you're alive. One team, one love. Marvel it's the Marvel Tribe. Tribe. Yes. yes, here we are. How's everyone doing tonight? Good. Fantastic. We are recording this on Sunday night. So um Falcon and Winter Soldier's been out for a couple of days already. Uh, David, how are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm great. I'm 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 loving the start to what's going on with this season. So I'm um, yeah, I'm doing good. Are you enjoying this nice weather we're having? Oh my god, yes. Uh, yes. Right. For those of you that don't know, me and David are both in Oregon. We live about a mile away from each other, and it's actually been gorgeous here all weekend. So here nice. too in oh. the Midwest. Right. You're in Chicago, right? Or right by Chicago? Just outside Chicago, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think the benefit of having the good weather is I mean, it sucked because you had a quarantine and you know there's you know, there's only so much you can do when it's bad weather, but when it's good weather, you can go explore Oregon. And oh yeah. And Oregon is green. We were talking about that today. My wife asked me, she says, where's Prospect at? And I said, it's like an hour away. They have like some waterfalls there that she can like take kids and walk to, which is like a flat quarter mile walk to a nice waterfall. And they have the natural bridge and stuff there. So we we're talking about doing that with our grandkids maybe next weekend or something. So it is it's nice to be that time of year where it's you can get out and do stuff. Um, everyone's been cooped up for a year. So it's been oh, nice we will to- still get snow at some point. Oh, we we'll probably will too. Ouch. We probably will. We might get it again. I think sometime before April. You just never know. Here, that's yeah. that's how it is. Let me ask you this, Sam. In, in Indiana, does it does it rain and the sun's up? Does that happen there? Not really. Yeah, that happens in Oregon like all the time. You look up and it is sunny and it's raining. It's the weirdest thing. So, but it is what it is. But we can talk. We can't talk about weather all night. So let's get into the show. Um, we're excited. We had our little break from a Marvel uh, sitcom, I guess you would call it, or a Marvel episodic series on Disney+. Plus. We had a one-week break. Now we're back with Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, before we get into that, I, I want to ask you guys a couple questions because, as you all know on this, oh, I want to mention also that David, that um, Bill and uh, Chris are not with us tonight. Yep. Um, they are both at um, Walt Disney World with Barry from Airbnb Podcast as well. So I know they're having a great time. We've seen the pictures, and um, I we're kind of no jealous. No I know, right? Okay, <laughs> I oh, I am supposed to be the princess of this club, and they didn't even invite me. I'm yeah. so traumatized. Yeah, uh. I will say though, the pictures of the food they're eating are they staying at the Polynesian? They are staying at the Polynesian. Wow. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the pictures that they've been sharing have been amazing. So, guys, hope you're having a great time. We miss you. We'll see you guys when you get back. Um, I heart no. you guys. <laughs> so let's get on with this. So before we get into the show, um, as you all know, I am not one on here that does not know a lot. So I asked David before we started if he would take mind taking a few minutes and Sam as well to kind of explain to our listeners who are kind of newer listeners like myself of who the Falcon is, kind of where he came from, like quickly or and, and also I know the Winter Soldier is a lot more complex bucky but um if just kind of like real you know cliff notes version of who they are so our listeners who haven't listened before or new listener welcome by the way um 
tell us kind of who they are and where they've started from, if you don't mind. Both of you, please take take a few minutes. Right. So, so you know, for those who don't know, I mean, uh, the Falcon is is it's Sam Sam Wilson is his name. Um, Samuel Thompson Wilson, aka the Falcon, aka the good looking guy in the sunglasses, yes. aka the badass. Some of those aliases were self proclaimed by him, especially <laughs> the good looking guy in the glasses. Um, he's what about funny. AKA on your left? On oh, your, yeah. AKA on your left. Yes, Not, Deshaun, do you get that reference? I now? do get that now. Yes. Thank you for, okay. for yes. <laughs> So he was he was a he was a part of the uh, the United States uh, pararescue uh, group. So he was an Army airman. Um, he got to use a lot of their experimental technology from the start. Um, he and he did uh, amazing. I mean, he he did like this outrageous amount of combat missions and pararescues and everything else. Highly decorated soldier. Uh, had a um, partner, and the way it goes in the Marvel Universe, he had a partner, uh, Riley, I believe, died on one of the missions and stuff. And so he, that took, you know, that kind of took him out of the game a bit and hit him hard. So he left, and he decided to kind of dedicate the rest of his life to um, helping soldiers with PTSD. So this is kind of uh, where kind of Cap and him kind of have that kind of bond and stuff because, you know, Captain America is a soldier as well. And and that dude, he has a heart, you know, like anyone else. Um, so, yeah, so uh, Sam, you know, uh, Falcon decided to dedicate his life to doing that. And he still kept the tech because for those who don't know, he does have an engineering background and he kind of helped built uh some of that the build on top of the stark in uh stark technology and stuff that the military was using to make it his own and okay. he flew uh with those wings versus you know most pararescue guys are in a helicopter or some kind of uh, other aircraft um he he was uh, mr solo um with, with you know it was just him and uh, him and a sidekick and stuff um, so as you got to see the MCU, the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of him, you saw his tech get better and better and better because that's what Sam did. He worked on his own tech to make it better and better and better. And his new sidekick, which he didn't, you know, he's he's still having troubles um, and, as we'll, we, we will see here in the show of uh, having a human for a sidekick. He didn't mind being, you know, playing second fiddle or even support for Captain America, but having someone to be that for him, that wasn't a thing he was willing to take that mantle on. So he got Red Wing. So Red Wing is He's really an, cool, by the way. Oh, my God. Red Wing is like the <laughs> RTD2 right? of, yes, of the Marvel Universe and stuff. Um, it's, you know, like Jarvis and, you know, like with, a you know, uh, Iron Man and Jarvis and stuff. So yeah, so Red Wings, the new sidekick, who's I think is going to be the new kick-ass uh, thing in the for the series. I think we're going to have kids wanting their own little Red drone Wing. Red Wing and stuff. <laughs> Hopefully, Disney man, please don't let kids. this ball drop. I I'm want just, one. I just got to say, Disney, don't let the ball drop like you did with Baby Yoda. Please tell me you have a wet Red Wing drone <laughs> ready to go out for Christmas. Oh God, would year. that be amazing? Oh my God, I and yes, kids like Sam's point. I want one myself. This, right. you know, I have kids. I can use it as an excuse, but I don't care. I want a Red Wing. Uh, so anyway, so we're yeah, Disney so, fans. We don't have to grow up. Peter right. Pan said so. That's right. Exactly. So yeah, so that's you know, so that's a little bit about about him. He became an Avenger. He helped, you know, he helped with Cap. He he in this <laughs> the series will fit. We'll find out that uh, question about you know, do the Avengers actually make any money? Right. So how do they live? Which I mean, it soberly answers that question. Yeah. And stuff. What's going on? So I do have to interject for a quick second. Go ahead. I did just read an article before we came on that said Marvel has already announced that they are setting up for a different group of avengers for phase five already they've already started that. thinking about this phase five, a this, new group of avengers yeah and this show's supposed to help with that i, I saw that something mm -hmm. like that too could we be talking about the young avengers possibly young avengers thunderbolts we have there's thunderbolts a bunch too, of, yeah so we're gonna have i guarantee we're gonna have a phase four five and six six is probably going to be, and no one even talking about six but it's gonna be the same kind of same run that we had with uh, phase one you know iron man the start of you know to the culmination of phase three with end game and stuff so yeah we're gonna have multiple phases and stuff and i think each phase we're gonna get introduced to a new 
realm. So I think we'll see mutants. And that's going to take up a lot of, of a particular phase. We're going to, we know how I feel yes. about that. <laughs> We're going to see the younger uh, Avengers who are going to be taking over mantles and, 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 the, and themselves stepping into the stage light and, you know, with their own characters and stuff. And yeah, so I'm, I'm excited for it. It's, it's kind of the passing of the torch. Okay. So do we know at this point, like, okay, so do we know who is currently like an Avenger post flip? Like, are the Avengers still a thing? No, no, they're just, they're kind of disbanded. They're not really, yeah. there's no, technically there's no Avengers. There's uh, no right direction now. for them, right? No, okay. No. So I have a they're quick question. I have a quick question about Sam. He he has no powers or anything, right? He wasn't frozen or anything. No, like he's that. not a he, super soldier. He's just like Tony Stark, just yep. kind of okay. Yep. Okay, yep. he's okay. a tech guy. Tech yeah. guy, okay. A guy who can kick ass. He can fight. Right. I love him. I I I I absolutely love this show. That's I mean, just the first episode. We haven't talked about, so we'll get into it. So talk about Bucky a little bit, just so our fans kind of know who he is, and we'll dive into this show. Oh, Bucky. My um, daughter asked me the same question earlier, Haley. She said, who is, mommy, who is Bucky? And I was like, where do I start? Great. So I am on the same wavelength as a five-year-old. Perfect. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. So, Buc- so Bucky, Bucky She's Barnes. advanced. All right, perfect. <laughs> so Mr. Bucky Barnes, who is a super grandpa and super soldier <laughs> as well, uh, he's as old as Cap. Um, in fact, yeah. he's actually older than Cap. Um, he's 106 years old. Yeah. Uh, he, sir, he's the reason why, you know, he, he, he was friends with Cap before Cap took his the super serum and stuff. Um, in fact, when Captain Merrick, when um, uh, Steve Rogers became Captain America. Bucky was just Bucky Rogers. He he was a part of their special forces group where they're going around the world, you know, trouncing on bad guys and stuff um, under Cap's uh, leadership. Um, him and Cap became real, real close because of that. You know, he all all kept, you know, Captain wanted to do was just to kind of serve his country and and serve for the greater good and stuff. Uh, Cap, as you guys know, had a problem using weapons uh you know he wasn't a big fan he, he rather used his fist and the shield uh bucky did not have a problem with <laughs> using weapons you know and everything else he was a, he was a real he was actually a real real soldier and stuff um and one of on one of the missions there was an event that happened that um we all were led to believe that it cost uh bucky his life uh, what has happened is Hydra actually was able to uh, grab Bucky before he perished, and they injected him with their own version of the Super Soldier ser- uh, Serum and turning him into one of several Winter Soldiers and stuff. Um, he was the best of all of them, um, and they started sending him out on missions, and, mm-hmm. and his success rate was crazy. Um, he's, you know, I mean, he's, you know, we all know he's responsible for the death of Stark's parents. You know, they were trying to get uh, some some secret technologies from which they did. They managed to get his briefcase and everything else. So, you know, I mean, Hydra, if you guys don't know, their their plan was world domination. That, that was it through military might. And Winter Soldier was a big part of them executing that plan. Um, in order to get uh, so a part of the, the, the secret serum, it wasn't like Bucky just turned bad. They had to break his brain. Mm-hmm. And they did that through, um, some would say, kind of uh, just kind of, you know, a little bit. Of, we saw a little witchcrafty stuff with um, uh, the Scarlet Witch and stuff. You know, you say these certain words, which we got to see at the end credits of the first episode here of what those words were. Um, but it was just brainwashing uh, technique and stuff that was being used. I think there was a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of magic introduced into that to make that happen and stuff. But uh, he was under, fully under their control and he was just executing missions like a mindless robot. And it's um, like they had to, like, going back to the episode that we recorded last night, David, um, they kind of had to, like, incite this trauma response in his brain where he is constantly in fight mode. Like he didn't know how to turn it off. He still doesn't know how to turn it off. That's why we see him in therapy right now. He's so, he's made to destroy. Oh so yes. So with that, um, there's so the hold of that book is no longer on on Bucky, um, which due to large part of Shuri. So uh, you know, um, after Civil War events, uh, Captain America took Winter Soldier to Wakanda. And they had Cherry kind of help deprogram him, which he, which he, which she did. 
he you know he he even said he felt at peace there. It was kind of because of, Shuri's you know, a badass. She is. She's an amazing, amazing, amazing woman, a uh, young young lady. And so yeah, so he felt peace there, and then you know he got called back up to fight, and he does you know that's what he does best. He's a fighter and stuff. And so with that, um, you know get, again he was a wanted man the government but after the events of the the blip the snapping you know whatever the government it looks like the government made a deal with them and we see this kind of taking place unfolding in the first episode of you know he has a part of his condition of his pardon yes to make amends they gave him these sets of rules he has to follow he can't do anything illegal uh he can't hurt anybody you know and he has to you know denounce the winter soldier and go by his his you know legal name bucky barnes yeah so yeah so there's so there's that so that's kind of just a small okay. little snippet of, of the winter soldier <clears throat> and falcon there so so he's meaner than wanda right <laughs> meaner he's you know he, he's brainwashed Tougher. into being mean. meaner so i mean he kills people wanda hasn't killed anyone yet so wanda's kill people okay all right she did hold a whole town hostage. I had to get Wanda in here somehow. You know that, so. <laughs> I mean, that was part of her, the the whole. Um, <clears throat> Here's the thing. Has, Nobody but... brainwashed and reprogrammed Wanda's brain. It was all yeah. trauma responses, yeah. trauma and grief responses. So she it was in complete cognizance of what she was doing. That's fair. Um, I don't know. I think, I think Vishon, he, he played a number on him. He, he ran some Vishon. games. <laughs> Vishon, he, Vishon, he just he just he, he made her showed up in her life and messed everything up. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. um, right, so go ahead. No, but yeah, he definitely he's been brainwashed. He's not he wasn't in control of his own mind or his own thoughts for a while. So I think it's great that we're seeing him in therapy. It gives me hope no. for his character. Hope so that he can he can be a redeemed. What he can be redeemed. He he can have a redemption arc. Yeah. He's so already redeemed. I mean, I, yeah. I, we we know the story behind Bucky and what what's controlling on him and stuff. So from the audience perspective, he's redeemed. But I think from, right. from the world that he's living in, he has to interact in. He has a ways to kind of go. To I think Bucky trust. also has to feel redeemed himself. He's mm -hmm. not accepted his own redemption. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Truth. All right. So we will get into the Falcon and Winter Soldier now. Sam, are you ready for your recap? Oh, I didn't realize I was doing the recap this time. I, oh, only, I only watched it once, but that's okay. okay. Um, we can do it together. We can do it together. Right. We can just start from the beginning. I mean, the yeah, beginning. Yeah, I only had a chance to watch it once. So the beginning is, honestly, we jump right into kick-ass action. Oh, which yeah. Which is not what we got from WandaVision. Right. WandaVision, you know, was that slow burn. Mm -hmm. This was... MCU in your this face right away. All I in loved MCU, it. Yeah. like yeah. So Falcon is <clears throat> on, you know, a mission. Um, covert it, mission. Yeah, covert mission. He was. I don't know who the guy was that he trying was to trying save to. some. He was trying there, to save a captain from the military. So, yeah, like, a captain so. named Vesic or something like no, that. Na na any... Navsit or Navsit or something like that. Yeah. But was, yeah. But but yeah, so his mission was to do that before they can cross the to the Libya border. Um, you know, America and Libya don't have friendly relations, so right. and they can't know that they're operating in that area. So that's why they're going to use Falcon and military is just going to provide a little bit of ground support. <laughs> I really like his, I really like the guy on the ground. Taurus. Like Taurus. Yeah, yeah he's, Taurus. He's cool. I like Taurus. Taurus. Taurus becomes more in 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 Stan's story, doesn't he? For I I think I've seen that. The, well, to Taurus, I mean, so in, in the comic book, so uh, walking Taurus, right. it, it becomes Falcon. He takes up the mountain mantle oh, okay. of Falcon when mm -hmm. Falcon becomes uh, uh, Captain America. So okay, I'm not sure if that's the, the, the arc that they're going to follow. But God, I hope so, because this episode, can I say pissed? Because it pissed me off. Good, absolutely. Yeah. The end of this episode, I was like, they did Sam dirty. <laughs> oh, we'll get oh there. yeah, we'll get there. We will get there. Yeah. But the beginning of this, I mean... I think Sean from um, Walt's apartment, he put on uh, Twitter last night saying that, you know, this should be the new scenery for soaring, you know, the, the, the ride at Disneyland, because oh, it was, a, oh it was, and, ab hey, it was absolutely amazing. I mean, there it's like is 15 soaring yeah. at Walt Disney World, too, sir. I'm sorry. There is. Okay. Okay. Epcot. Yeah. Epcot, okay. my friends. Okay. Well, anyway, it's at both places, at both parks. Oh, the Falcon ride would be amazing. Oh, my God. You guys didn't get dizzy. I got dizzy. I was also oh. probably drinking. So there's probably... 
Okay, great. No, I didn't. No, I didn't get dizzy. It was absolutely like I buckled my seatbelt. It was. Like, it was yes, great. It was just like fifteen is... minutes of just yeah. action, and felt like it was like Top Gunish to me, kind of oh, just man. like fighting through the mountains. And he he releases what's the Red Wing? Is that his name? Yeah, Red Wing. Red yeah, Wing yeah. comes out and cuts a hole in the in the airplane, and then I love. I I don't like I said not know a lot about Sam just the way his equipment works when they were shooting at him and he was able to get his wings up to deflect and you know kills the kills the pilot the pilot of the plane and just I loved it okay like think about his equipment the way you would think about Nick Fury's car or his SUV in Captain America and the Winter Soldier like you just have to speak to it and just like it's it you're Think of it as like a vehicle that is meant there to protect you, to keep you alive. Right. So it can do pretty much anything you need it to do to stay alive. I loved it. I, it's like it was in sync. So it's kind of his armor is like in sync with him as well. So he can, mm-hmm. it kind of re- re- reads his thoughts and stuff, it seems like, and does what he needs to. Because I thought it was a great. So I could just go on about the first 15 minutes for Prob- a Yeah. I mean, it's probably connected to his neurons somehow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, well, yeah. Yes and yes. It's, it's kind of like how, you know, uh, Stark's, Stark's uh, his Iron Man suit uh, mm-hmm. interacts with him and stuff and, you know, that relationship that he has and stuff with it. Oh, so, yeah. I, do, I When I saw, so first of all, shout out to uh, the Mr. UFC, uh, Mr. Uh, St. Pierre. He reprised his role as a, as a, 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 a Batrock the Leaper, mm-hmm. who, you know, if those who know in Winter Soldier, he was, uh, you know, he was a, a mercenary for hire. He was hired to hijack a ship, you know, for a Captain America mission. And, you know, Black Widow had a separate <laughs> mission to try to uh, steal data for Nick Fury and stuff and to find out, like, Nick Fury kind of set up this whole thing. But yeah, so, you know, Batrock the Leaper is back. We're not sure. You know, he's the one who's uh, obviously kidnapping this this uh, captain here, but and we don't really know much beyond that. But I loved it. We got to see the fight. I, when I saw him, I was like, please let there be a fight scene. As, you know, if you guys didn't know in Winter Soldier, him and Captain America has a fight scene that is just stellar. I, I loved it. He pounds his chest. He does the exact <laughs> same thing he did in Winter Soldier and stuff. Except for, you know, Cap, obviously Cap dusted his butt. And right. then, you know, and then you have Falcon as well, who's kind of stepping up and like, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's square off. So it was just action, mm-hmm. action. I it was I loved it. It was it was it was amazing. Of course he escapes. That's yep. you know But he, he escapes, it. but Falcon and he got got the prize. He you oh, know, yes. got, he got yep. the target. He yep. wasn't going to yep. give up even when they told him to call it off. He was like, "I got this." Yep, still got cool. time. You're close to the border. Yeah, I I the first scene was great, and I love just all the action. Like like Sam said, from the beginning of WandaVision, where it took two episodes to get into something, you know. But and I, that, I think go ahead, man. No, I just saying it was just great. I mean, just to start off like that and then slow down, I thought was okay. This is cool. I really, I, I, I love what they did here. It's a complete opposite of the other shows. So, but and I really think they wanted to um, really kind of show off Falcon's skill set. Yeah, uh, they they got to do it a little bit. And it's, made me a fan. Little, I'm not gonna lie. It made was, me a fan. Huge fan. I love Falcon, him. Falcon was always a uh, you know he was kind of you know as we you know without lack of a better word, a kind of a sidekick figure. Mm-hmm. And so you got to see a little bit of his action stuff. He got into a little tussle with a few other characters, Civil War. He fought Ant-Man a little bit, not really, but but you didn't really get to see the full spectrum of Falcon and what he can do. I think this fight scene was set up just for that purpose. You get to see Falcon in all his glory and Agreed. really how much of a badass he was. And yep. they did not, they, they delivered, they did not fail. So. I absolutely agree with you. I think they did the same thing with Bucky. They show a little flashback with him too, and then show what kind of badass he is. And uh, you know, so I, yeah. So go on. I'm sorry. No, oh, no, no, no. So yeah, so he saves the captain, and you know, and the and you know, and also you know, there's like you know the you know tourists on the ground, you know, providing that comedic kind of uh, mm-hmm. little psychic role. Which oh, I'm I love to, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm liking it and stuff. So we uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him a lot more and a lot bigger role. And stuff, which we which we do later in the film and stuff um, in the show. Sorry, um, but yeah. So that mission's over, and he ends up saving you know the captain. And then I believe they uh, kind of fast forward to him is uh, with the sh- is it him with the shield? Yet? It's Sam with the shield. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Sam with the shield, and he's going to be donated to the government. Well, he sits down. He talks to he he, he talks to Torres before that. 
they're sitting somewhere and oh, someone that's won't, right. yeah, and they're they sitting are. like they're in like, sitting, like a yeah. little like village like a, or something. Yeah, they're sitting. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They're debriefing. And yep. Yep. They're talking about um, what is the name? I can't even remember now. Flag smashers. The, yeah, yeah, the flag, the flag smashers. smashers yeah. yeah, and so they're looking for the signs for the flag smashers, and he's explaining to. Uh, Sam about the flag smashers because Sam. And then someone him. comes up and thanks them for thanks Sam for bringing back his wife. They said, you know, my wife was gone. You you brought my wife back. So just cool to show the admiration. This is six months after, after the snap. So that admiration came back into play though because <laughs> Sam thought that admiration held more yes. value than it did. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah. Which we'll definitely get into, but uh, yeah. So then they go there. They're talking a little bit. He's fixing. It looks like he's fixing Red Wing there. Yeah, he is, and he said he it. doesn't let anybody else touch Red Wing because it's always screwed up by other agents. Right. So then he says, "I got to go. I'm going to Washington." He goes to Washington D.C. to where he. He yes. well, well, well. <laughs> Torres asks him if. Oh. Steve Rogers is on the moon. Oh, the big theory. The big theory. Pull him, pull him to the moon. <laughs> So I, which is which is actually very telling because I really thought they were going to kind of fake Captain America's death and everything else, but they he just disappeared. So all we know is episode one, the real Captain America is disappeared, and there's these floating theories about where where it's his whereabouts. And one of the predominant theories is that he's on the moon base uh, somewhere. Uh, and Falcon flew him there. Right. Yeah. Falcon yeah. took him there. <laughs> so, and then Falcon kind of looks at him. It's like, yeah, don't, don't leave everything you hear on the internet. And which then he's kinda, like, I've, I've got to go which, to Washington yeah. to do some moon things. <laughs> so moon business. It, as an internet person, personality, and, and you know, that we are, and that kind of hurt a little bit when he said that. I felt he was looking at us when he said it. Don't leave everything you hear on the internet. Did you, oh, did you feel attacked? I felt attacked a little bit. A little Listen, bit. We fact check here. We do. We do. Absolutely. We fact check. And if we are speculating about something, we tell we let you, you know. speculation. We tell you yes. speculation. Yeah. You can trust the Marvel tribe. You can trust yeah. Walt's apartment. Yes, Absolutely. Man. So he's going to watch a ten. He's going to donate the, you know, he, he, the speech he gives, it's, it, it's kind of also a setup in production to the next phase. Cause he's talking about how, you know, it's kind of probably time to let, you know, the old kind of, die out and let the new mm -hmm. kind of uh take the place and step up and hear the calling and stuff and, and you know it's it's you know we need new heroes for a new world and stuff um which i also think those words are going to come back and it's going to it's, it's, it's i think it's, they're going to do that thing where it kind of comes back and you see him take up a new mantle but i'm just projecting i think it's forecasting and stuff but yeah he so he donates to the to the smithsonian and yeah, Rhodey's this, there Rhodes yeah, is there yes we get a cameo from mr Rhodey uh, don War Machine. Cheadle. <laughs> oh, that dude that is hilarious don Cheadle. <laughs> absolutely absolutely so he you know so he says this amazing uh, this great speech and they give it to the smithsonian they do the kind of jerky things like, yeah, thank you for, you know, this is the right decision for you to make was to do this. And, they, you know, and so him and, you know, Brody takes Wilson over off the side, like, hey, can we talk and, you know, have a conversation? So they're walking through the halls of uh, Captain America and we get to see all the mil memorabilia throughout the, you know, times. And we got to see Captain America issue number one. Mm -hmm. on, on I love when there. they're walking through it. I love when they're walking through it because it's that flashback to Steve mm -hmm. walking through it. It just oh. and he winks at the little boy like shh. It it was it was a callback for me. No, absolutely. Um, they did they did some really good things. They did the reflection of the shield, mm -hmm. and uh, he was looking at, at, at himself in the reflection of the shield, and it was just kind of off, you know. And, and I think that was done purposefully. It's kind of yep. the same way with you know uh, Steve Rogers when he was looking at becoming that soldier, and he was the the scrawny. Is that me? What? I'm hearing feedback. Sorry. I think it was a motorcycle. Sorry. Sounded like oh. a race car. Yeah. Sure. I, I live right next to the freeway. Sorry. My bad. No, no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> How so, dare you, Sean? Move your house. Okay. Pick it up and move it. <laughs> so it's kind of reminiscence of the whole, you know, we want you and, you know, uh, and Steve Rogers didn't quite fit into that American ideal of a soldier. So in the reflection. So yeah. it's the same thing here. Like, you know, the cat shield, he just, it just kind of really spoke to that. He doesn't feel like he's, he, he's suited for that mantle yet. It just doesn't. He said. Right he yet. said it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he, he said it belongs. Like we know that that means he's thinking it belongs to Steve. Yep. Absolutely. Oh. 
that is me and my smoke detector. I think someone's cooking. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going to let you guys talk, and uh, I'm going to make sure my house isn't on fire. Okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so he says that. He says that he doesn't feel like the mantle is meant for him. Right. And I, I thought there's, some, like you said, the, the, that scene's great. Rody's saying, I just got to know, why didn't you take it? Why didn't you take the the mantle? He's like, I'm not basically saying he's not ready and blah, blah, blah. And and like like David said, that 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 shot of him looking at the shield and off to the side, and it's just like it doesn't, does, you know, just doesn't feel that it's that it's his. And I and I get that. And he's. But we he's also like a, know that like Sam does not want anybody else to take that mantle. He doesn't want Steve's right. memory as Captain America right. to be replaced by someone else. He thinks the mantle should die or be left with Steve. Right. And I think I think he thought he was doing a good thing. By having that there, and he gave them, you know, they had his motorcycle there, and they had, every, you know, a lot of other stuff mm-hmm. in the you shield. But can't like, trust the government. I know, yeah, right? I Dang mean, it. his his goal and his wishes was to retire Captain America. And right. then, you know, and then retiring the mantle, yeah. Yeah, and, and obviously we, we don't see that happening. But right. So, yeah, so then so then they cut to... Um, That's the Bucky scene where he's... he's Bucky's, Bucky's taking therapy. Out people. Yeah, oh, no, he was at a, he, he was at therapy telling the the. Well, he had a dream uh, first. He had yeah, a dream. The dream. First. He had, he had the a dream where he went when he shot the when he shot yeah. the guy. Yep. And, the... and then and then he wakes up from the dream, and I saw a lot of memes. The ladies really liked that shot of him waking up, you know, on the floor. I saw I don't know. I saw a lot of different. Yeah, I don't know. People laid the ladies <laughs> liked it. I'm just telling you. I, I follow... can tell you, Bucky is not someone that. I... <laughs> I am looking for it in my memes. I'm just have you seen the memes where they say that they tell you it's not too hot or something like that, and then they say then here it is, like here's the meal or something like that. I'm no, going you're, gonna, you're gonna have to share those with I'm me. I'm gonna have talking. to find it. Yeah. We we well, travel in different groups there. I don't yeah, follow I follow a lot, a lot of groups to try to get as much information I can to keep up with you guys. So maybe some of it's not the best, but oh well. No, no worries. Hey, but anyway, fun, Bucky has fun. a flashback to where he's killing people. He's about to kill this gentleman. You hear the gunshot, he wakes up. Then he sits up really fast and looks around. Then he's in therapy with a pretty badass uh, therapist. She just kind of puts him in his She's place tough. and tells him what's yeah. up. Yeah, he has so. he has horrible PTSD. Yeah. But I mean, like we said, he's brainwashed. He doesn't even know who he is all the time. Like, like he not that he has disassociative personality disorder or anything, but like he's struggling between being this assassin and trying to be a decent human. He's trying to find balance. His life post blip is like trying to make amends. That's his biggest thing is making amends with everyone. Plus, he's old as dirt. Yeah, she tells you how old he is. Like, what, 106 or something? Dang. So I'm he like, has. I'm like, you look good for 106. <laughs> right. <laughs> so unfortunate for him, he has a, he he has all this trauma he has to deal with that was basically um, it's just almost like you're, you're living a stranger's nightmare because he wasn't in control of any mm-hmm. of this, but he gets all of the trauma from it. So he, he's dealing with that. And so part of that is, is the whole making amends. He has the book, he's doing the steps program and stuff. Um, and he, let has me stop list. you on the book. Can I stop you on the list real quick? Because yeah, go ahead. I have to shout my son out, Brady. He wanted me to say his name that, um, that he found this. He, he watched the show like three times and paused it on the book. And did you read the names in the book? Yep. Yep. Sure. Did. And Zemo Zima is yep, one of yep. them. Okay. Yep. He, yeah, he, H- he, was. On there. he wanted me to throw it on there. So Brady, there. David already. Good knows job, that, Brady. So. <laughs> but there you yes. go. No, thank you. I appreciate that, Brady. No, <laughs> yes. So H Zemo is is like a fourth, uh, fourth or fifth on that on this list. But there's multiple pages on this list. Yeah. You know, because he's done a lot of. Yeah. He's been. Winter Soldier has been putting in work. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. So, but yeah, another person on that list is is a uh, uh, Euro, um, mm-hmm. which is Yuri. Uh, Yuri, sorry, Yuri, Yuri right, Naka, yeah. Naka, Nakajima, Nakajima, uh, something like that. Yeah, Jima, yeah, Nakajima. Yeah. Um, his son, as you know, as we later find out, was was a part of that nightmare, that that mission. You know, the mm-hmm. the guy who was fumbling with the keys, and we don't know his role. You know what that building was, or what his role was in that, but we do know he was a victim of the Winter Soldier and part of uh, you know um, making amends. You know, uh, Winter Soldier, the old man. You know, Bucky befriended Yuri, and you know they go out to eat you know Japanese food, and you know this is kind of their thing. And I think he's just kind of trying to work up the courage to try to figure out how to make amends. Right. Meanwhile. This is like Yuri's like his because friend Yuri, right now. yeah, but the, yeah, so like he has this amazing bond with Yuri, but 
he finds out during this episode how deeply Yuri is still grieving for his son. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, he sees the, you know, altar shrine set up to his son, the candles for his son at his place. Um, he hears the bartender girl talk about, you know, Yuri longing for his son and how sweet she thinks it is that Bucky is, you know, befriending him. And that fills Bucky with immense guilt. So the bartender girl, was that like a date or was that just because uh, he brought her, I think, I think he brought her, Yuri, he brought her flowers. So well, because I think Yuri set it up. Yeah. Okay. 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 That makes sense. I was asking my kids and they're saying, yeah, it was a date, dad. Pay attention. And I didn't see that both times I watched it. So well, just... Yuri said, Yuri said, how was your date? Oh, okay. Okay. Miss that was a date. Yeah, you've been I'm out sorry. of the game. You've been out of the game for a while. So. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's, how, that's how they did the date back in, you know, in okay. the good old days. But Play yeah, yeah, playing Battleship. So. Drinking. I get, hey. Oh, my gosh. Two people are having fun, you're having fun. So that's there you crazy. go. You yep. know, uh, that's great. Like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever been on a date. <laughs> really? Wow. That's... No, I've been with my husband since I was In 19. Deep, deep dive into holy moly. <laughs> well, okay. You're, you're not missing anything. The, the world is weird out there. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but any, anyway, back to back to the Winter Falcon. Uh, back yes. to the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, so yeah, so you know, she's uh, he's. I mean, he's talking to you know the the therapist or whatever, and she's like trying. She's like you guys said, she's really good. She's pulling stuff out of him. Like, hey, um, we need to talk about your nightmares. Like, I'm not having nightmares. She brings out the uh, notebook, which triggers him, and he's like, fine, all right, I'll talk. Um, you know, there's this mission. You it know, was and- basically like she was threatening to get him in trouble, like, because he has conditions on being allowed back in society. Right. Yep. Right. And, and she was like, oh, well, you're not going to do the work? Then fine, let's see what we let's see who we can call. I was kind yeah. of like the air that I got from her. She was manipulating him oh, yeah. into doing oh, yeah. the work. Yep. So power to you, girl. <laughs> So she he talked about a recent mission, another recent mission and stuff where um, as he was describing the rules and stuff like, you know, the first rule is not to do anything illegal. And in this first mission, he puts this tracking control device on the smart vehicle, which he took a little control over, which is illegal, <laughs> which is great, by the way. <laughs> and he parked it between these two beams so the doors can't be opened. So he kind of trapped this, these people in this car. So that was the first rule he broke. Then the then they as they go through the uh, as they showing us you know what's happening they talk. But about wait, the why is that illegal? To take control over someone else's car. <laughs> because That's, is there a like written he, rule? He but but carjack somebody basically. Oh, but but did he? Because he did not physically have to touch the car. It, well, in the in, is in, that, the, in did the year twenty twenty three, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to take take over someone's computer in their car and and move their your, your car. But I'm just saying it's not written into law now, so I'm gonna say it's okay, Bucky. You can break the law. <laughs> There's a lot of things about the Marvel universe that isn't really you know co- cohesion to our world right now so yes but, i agree with you yes it's not did, in our he's, he he twisted he bent the law he didn't break it he bent it here i am arguing wanda's not evil yeah, i'm just phil? gonna bring this shit up i'm sorry where to... where's so, bill to tell me bucky's bad <laughs> so he he you're saying he jaywalked on the law versus like robbed the bank on the law i mean yeah like he skipped there's across levels. it he didn't run across it so and I'm here to say that yes, while he may have jaywalked, it's still a crime. It was, it was still naughty. Yes, it's still he's illegal. still it's still breaking the terms or the conditions of his yeah. release and his and, therapy. And and not only carjacking, it's also kidnapping. He trapped them in the car. They can't. They couldn't get out because leave. They weren't free to leave. Yeah, we know how so you feel about kidnapping, Sam. You know you don't like it. So you know what? Why what? is David being Bill right now? I... <laughs> No, I, someone's got to be Bill when Bill's not here. I guess, but I, I think I'm making way, way stronger <laughs> arguments for myself. Right so, you are. So we have kidnapping and we have carjacking, um, which is you know he was all able to do in a very short period of time. He parked the car between two beams; they couldn't get out. He then walked, proceeded to walk up to the vehicle and break rule number two, which was not to hurt anybody anymore. He punched the dude out. The uh, hired he knocked him, him out. 
cold cocked him, you know, the, the soon to be hired hitman and stuff. And then rule three, which was, you know, hi, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Bucky. I am no longer the winter soldier. I am Bucky Barnes. <laughs> I am, I am Bucky Barnes. And as he looked her, the, the, um, the Senator who was the Hydra agent still doing her bad stuff, um, in the face as he walks off as, the all the agents come to arrest her and take her to jail for her crimes and misdeeds. I do have a question for you. Yeah, he definitely wanted her to get served the justice that she deserved. How big is Hydra at this point? Well, they talked about it a little bit. So he, the Hydra is kind of disbanded. Like there's remnants of them, so there may be elements of them trying to rebuild but she's no longer taking command she's kind of like rogue hydra and that's where so basically we're in the same place as shield is yeah basically there's remnants there's agents that are around but they don't have any real direction no not well at least not that we see that they have not at this moment yeah not that they've introduced to us i mean we know that sword has direction you had direction. We don't know what's going on with them now. Well, we don't know what happened between week three post blip at the yeah. end of WandaVision yeah. and then six six that six so, months, that yeah. six months time span. Yes. So, so we can hope Nick Fury is still there. <laughs> well, we do know Nick is, is with sword now and yes. he's up on the sword thing and that takes place. Maybe he's on the moon Spider-Man. with Captain America. He could be. Captain America could be chilling in the pod next to him and we don't see him at the environment and stuff, which that would have been kind of cool if, if we saw that. So. But anyway, yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm derailing us. To- no, no, not at all. This this is great. So yes, there's there's remnants of, of Hydra people all over who are still loyal, still trying to you know take over and power grab and everything else. But we don't really know if there's any organization leading or you know you know moving chess pieces and stuff around so that and which i think we'll find out you know in the yeah. upcoming episodes i can't wait to see that um okay so then we move into back in the, i think now we go to louisiana right yeah. where sam's coming back home yes, yes see his yes. sister he's in oh man this half, i'm telling you this one kind of took me up a little bit because of chris Chris, you know, our, oh, our, yeah. co- our right. co-host, he's I from I thought the same Louisiana. thing, too, man. I thought the same damn thing. So Yeah, yeah. So um, he his his hometown, I'm trying to remember what it was, what was the name of it. Um, it was uh, Delacroix. Yeah, Delacroix. Delacroix, Delacroix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Falcon's Delacroix. home is in Delacroix. I want to I, well, I want to put some respect on it, you know, Louisiana, especially for 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 Chris and stuff. But yeah, right. Delacroix, Louisiana. Uh, his parents they had a fishing business, and at least the family, you know, it's part of the family legacy and stuff. And then after the blip, you know, he's been gone for five years, and the sister was left by herself to run this business with her two children, and it just didn't work out. Which you know, I get it, you know. People were going depressed. People, I mean, businesses were failing left and right. So mm-hmm. during that five years, it was just, it just wasn't working and stuff. And they were in trouble. And he came back home to kind of try to help fix things and, you know, get the business back on. She wanted to sell it. She was done with it. Yeah. Trying. And He's been dealing with it this whole time. So, yeah. yeah. This whole time. I joked last week that we might get This Is Us vibes mm-hmm. from Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And we actually kind of are. Yeah. We're I've seeing a lot of, you know. Show. We're getting a lot of the like human emotion struggling yeah. in the world, and like, I love it. I, I it's, it's such a different. Yeah, I, I think it's cool. I I love when we get to see people real people. Who we are supposed to I, be idealized as like mm-hmm. soldiers and like weapons and hero superheroes living real life. Yeah, yep. and they have trauma just like the rest of us. They have grief. They have regrets. I, I am really loving what what Marvel's giving us. I mean, they mm-hmm. just gave us the same thing with Wanda. They gave us Wanda actually having to deal with her grief. Right. And right now we're seeing, you know, two more characters that are beloved to us yeah, deal well, with their real traumas. Yeah, and things. we're seeing the impact that the blip has had on the world. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it almost feels like, holy crap, like this is our world because right now the world we're living in, like this COVID quarantine, like yeah. everybody's stuck at home still. And a year later, it's like 
<laughs> the blip feels more real to us than our yeah. real lives do. That actually makes a lot of sense, Sam. That, that, and, yeah, and, and the think, way you put it that way. Absolutely. And think about it. We, we all, we, we've we been so conditioned, and um, this isn't a shot to you, Disney, I love you, but we've all been conditioned that the fairy tale is the happy ever after and stuff once, you know, and we've had the, you know, we defeated Thanos, mm-hmm. and everyone's back from the blimp, so it should be happily ever after, but that wasn't, that's not the real world. Right. This, this is the <clears throat> after, after, and we get to see that, and it's very much real, and it, you know, left some people in situations that aren't, you know, that are, you know, that are relatable to us in the real world and stuff, Um. so we, we don't get that, you know, everyone, you know, happy ever after in the kingdom and stuff, which, you know, it's great. It's, 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 it's refreshing, and and it's also it's sad. It's raw and it's too. real. Yeah, yeah, it is absolutely. It is what we are all dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that even comes to light when you know he's at the house talking, and then we're going to have this plan. We're going to mm-hmm. consolidate the loans, and we're going to we can do this, and I'm going to help you. Yeah. I have a way, and he thinks it. He you can tell he thinks being a here. Being an Avenger has, is, wow. is gonna is gonna help. He th- and, yeah, he th- exactly. Cloud yeah. is the perfect cloud. Yeah, exactly. David. He thinks he's gonna get monetary value out of yep. his persona. Yep. And then he has a rude awakening when yeah. it's like, guess what? We don't have the money to give you just because you're you. Yeah. And the thing is, we all felt like that. We all felt that with Sam. Like we, we, we thought we, we, I, I don't. We all would be like, if we were heroes, or like you know, we all go through like if I was a superhero, I had superpowers. We all also had that kind of thinking in the back of our minds where our, our superhero would give us clout. We should be able to mm-hmm. like if I was if I was Superman or if I was, you know, uh well Stark is rich, but right. if I was Spider Man or someone, I should be able to walk in and, and get the hey high five is Spider Man. Get what I want, yeah, absolutely. What I want and stuff. Get the admiration and the money and the fame and everything else I need. Because I'm not abusing it. I, I prove You mean you don't get that podcasting? Wait a minute! What? <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I, some of I, us. I, I no, I'm just way. kidding. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> so, but yeah, no, I, I understand. So it was, it was really interesting, and it explained a lot of questions fans had over years and stuff about how the Avengers, like you know, really kind of heroes. How did they live? You know, like yeah. how, you know, what was what was their real lives and stuff. And this is what it, what it, what it is. And stuff. And Honestly, stuff. it's like. When you think about it, they like okay. Most of them are at Avengers Complex. Like think about it as they are they are military. Yeah. When you you're not like they're not getting paid to be military, but they're getting their housing provided. They're probably getting their meals and you know allowances for clothing and stuff or things mm-hmm. provided like that. They're they're, you know. Yeah, I guess this is six, and this is six months after Tony Stark died too. So you don't know what you don't know what happened with any well, of this. Well, he stuff. was a filthy billionaire. So there's. <laughs> Right. No, just, that's what I'm saying. You know, obviously he didn't leave them money. I mean, or he, he didn't leave anyone anything. He, he left it all with his wife, which it's all with Piper. Right. Pepper. Which Pepper, Pepper. Sorry. <laughs> 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 which, which is what you no, know, which is also with Stark uh, Industries and the company and everything else. I mean, it really is kind of sobering. You realize that it's like you know, Jeff if Jeff Bezos assembled you know these this really cool crack squad of people and stuff. He's not he's not really entitled to give up any of his billions of dollars to, to these people. I mean, no one says, "Hey, thanks for saving New York. Here's a check for a million dollars." In fact, you know. What they didn't do is say, "Hey, you saved New York, but you here's a bill for the billions of dollars of destruction that happened and stuff." You know, and we got a little bit of that um, with uh, with one of the with Spider Man and stuff um, when they hired the cleanup crew and all that stuff. But but so it it was kind of a kind of a raw take on you know how how people are living and stuff. So. It's it's it was it was cool. It's they answered a little bit of that and stuff, and so and then the bank, that dude in the bank, talk about a punchable face. Oh, absolutely! Oh my gosh! Yeah. Hey, can you like use your arms for a selfie? Yeah. Can, can you put your arms out like if, like the wings? Yeah. That. Yeah, and then there's well, there's there's another punchable face that we'll talk about here in a minute too. So oh, ob- oh, yeah. I really. We're, we're gonna, we're there's gonna a couple of faces I want to punch. So before, so we the one little part we missed in here was when um. Torres was he was going undercover to the, the flag that comes up next. Is that, that next? next? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Because okay, after bad. he get after they get denied, um, saying you okay, know, which, my bad. Which, I thought it was before. Sorry. No, like which was the most callous things. Like I show five years of no income, nothing, and so I'm like, are, are you for real, dude? I want right. more out of Sam's sister too. Like she, she's yeah. so woke and she's such mm-hmm. a strong, independent woman, and yep. she's like, I'm, I'm doing what I've got to do. Yeah. Yep. 
if I have to move on, I'm going to move on. Yep. She's a survivor. She is. I'm loving her character. So I I hope we get more out of her. You know how I feel about strong women characters. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And she's badass and she deserves more, more, I think. And I I hope they, I, I think they'll do more and stuff with her. Um, so they go back to the house, you know, after, you know, he, he didn't, you know, they're trying to figure out what's the next game plan. And then he gets a message from the, um, you know, from Torres and stuff. And so he gets on the phone or was a phone or video chat, Uh, like a video chat. Yeah. Yeah. With, with Torres and, and they're talking about actually to Torres. So. Let's yes, yeah, so let's go back. So um the, what the video chat was about. So Taurus was kind of doing some undercover work. He was, you know, he was following the the flag smashers and stuff, you know, the you know, the the guys with the, the black mask with the red uh handprint and the world inside of it. Um he, he it brought him to this location at nighttime in the in Switzerland, and it looks like it was a bait. That they, you know, the guys threw these bags out of and dropped off the second story floor like it was nothing. Kind of almost like they had some superpowers. It was kind of interesting. So everyone put their mask on and they got the little message. And I'm not sure what language it was in, but I know it says run. It right. said ran, but it means run. And so everybody was kind of there's just chaos and soothing and stuff. Um, him being the good guy he is. He can only he had to break character. He couldn't pretend to be right. Flax Masters anymore. So he tried to stop one of them and promptly got his butt kicked. Oh man. Um, man. He got stomped. He got he got he, curb stomped. He did get curb stomped. <laughs> In fact, he even told you know, he told as he told Sam, you know, he had an orbital fracture. Broken orbital, yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. So these people are powered. Um, don't know what that means. We don't know if there's mutants or part of the. I'm not speculating. I because I'm saying I don't know. Don't know if we just know that they're enhanced somehow, right? Um, and or this at least this this person who threw those bags out and was running, they're enhanced. That caught me super off guard. Yes, yes. I too. was like, I was like, what the heck just happened here? But I want, like, I want to know more. I want to know where these people came from. I, I hope that we're going to – I mean, obviously, we're going to keep getting their their story. We're going to figure out why Torres is following these people and what they mean. But I can't connect them to anything in the comics at this point. Have you yet, David? Yeah, so Flag Smasher is a character, not a group. So it's, it's kind of weird. So Flag, Sma- uh, Flag uh, Smasher is uh, this kind of a super villain who – don't believe in borders. Um, he, he's not a fan of, you know, um, of the way our governments are set up and stuff, which is why and they said that. Smasher and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so they bit, said so. it was a world without borders. Yep. Before so, the blip or before post the blip. blip. Yeah. yeah post blip. Because we all had a shared trauma and we were all grieving together. And so there's this new kind of uh, world that was emerging. And then we, we bring everyone back. So which they're not and they don't want everyone back. They don't want to go back to the way things were, where the government corruption and, and bureaucracy. Yeah, we saw it with Civil War. You know, the government was after some of the adventures. They wouldn't sign the accord and stuff like that. They didn't want that. So. What they so what the Flax Masters mission was to kind of bring things back to the way it was uh, post the trauma that was happening, and and I'm sure we'll learn more and more. I'm pretty sure, uh, and this is me making speculation. We're gonna see kind of Zemo behind cultivating this group mm-hmm. of uh, the Flax Masters. But yeah, Flax Masters was a person, not a group in the comic books, but kind of the same premise. So which comics should i look for them in like should, should i look for the flag smasher are you sure was it uh, was it in a captain america yeah it's it was a captain america so let me let me do a quick look i'm less i'm less familiar with captain america than i am other so comics like captain america number 312 is where their first appearance the flash force flash smasher flag smasher's first appearance so you found yeah. out that quick Dude, yeah, I'm, I'm plugged in. I got, I got, I got my. He's connection. the Red Hulk. Don't doubt Jesus. him. Damn, the man's got skills. I That's why so. he's here. Right. Yeah, so, if you want to know more about him, I don't know how much of the. So three twelve, you said Captain America three yeah, twelve. Number three twelve. Obviously, again, it's a group versus the supervillain. So 
I, they all they already broke with the, the story arc and stuff but it looks like they're still kind of in the same like they're kind of a terroristic group which he's a terrorist you know strategist as well and and that's kind of where that is so you may get some combinations of what what, what that is so here's what i'm gonna do i am gonna go find captain america 312 and I am going to read it. I'm going to research it. And I'm going to put a post in our group for Walt's apartment behind okay. the lamp. Okay. And I'm going to give everybody some background information that, because this is new for me too. Nice I don't plug. really know a, a lot about it. So, yes, I did. That was a nice plug. I know. No. <laughs> You're welcome. So, <laughs> I am going to go ahead. <clears throat> I am going to go read Captain America 312. Sure. I will link what I can about it and I'll share it with our group. I'll share it with our fans. Cool. And hopefully, you guys can learn along with me. Appreciate that. Um, so then the, obviously they have, he has his video conference with Taurus, sees what's happening. And they're like, mm-hmm. he says, keep, keep this between us. Yeah. And, and you know, for, for now. And then obviously the sister walks in and says, Sam, you need to see this. And then they, you know, go to the, uh, go, go to the, to the press conference. Wait, of, wait, when he said, keep that between us, did it give you Nick Fury? Don't trust anyone vibes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Cause that's what it gave me when he's telling Steve, don't trust anyone. Mm-hmm. So we go to the, you know, the guys talking and blah, blah, blah. We need a new hero and and all this stuff. And we're at a time where I don't remember what he's exactly what he's saying, but, you know, end of the inter- introduces brand new Captain America. This is the hero that the hero that the country needs right now. God, he looks crowd. like Carl from Up. That's it. Have Carl you seen the up. memes? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. It, well, yes. is this Kurt? This is Kurt Russell's son, right? It is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It and is. I mean, bless the character. Right. But. I, my theory behind it is they had to give us somebody that we could despise, mm-hmm. somebody that was going to be forgettable. Like, here's my thing: if no offense against the guy, but if they had given us like a Chris Evans to replace Captain <laughs> America, we might have been like, okay. But they gave us a guy with a face that we could punch. Oh damn! damn. So stop it. This is. I'm gonna call the episode thought. that. The face we could punch. The face we could punch. Call the episode. But no, like really, they gave us a guy who wasn't like super endearing, super charming, and charming. Like you just look at him and you're kind of like, meh. Yeah. Like, and then you get irritated because you know Sam oh, yeah. deserves this. Now, if they had given us like this beautiful man, I might have, mm-hmm. I might have been changing my tune. Like, okay, we got a new Captain America. <laughs> so, as much of a not of a fan of. of, of as I am of John Walker, who is, you know, the new Captain America. Um, I think Marvel did a little bit of um, uh, masking when the way they designed his outfit to be that way. Because a homeboy, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, at all fanboy. Uh, uh, oh, you fact. mean the Wish version? Yeah, yeah. They did this on, they did this on purpose. They gave us discount cap and they did some change into his outfit. Cap. Uh, the, to his outfit and stuff because they wanted you guys to see that this is a discount I just in the died America. because he's not going to last and here's the thing he's he's not a first of all he's not a bad looking guy if you see him he's a tremendous actor um, I first got introduced to him in Black Mirror on Netflix, the yeah. episodes of Black Mirror, he did the little the horror uh, movie uh, run which freaked me and out he's still too. not he's still not Steve Rogers He's, well, he's, uh, I'll just say this. He's not hes not actually a bad-looking guy and stuff. I really think the costume played him the way they wanted him to look. So that's it was purposely done. How do you think he feels about that? How do you think I, that he feels about being the most hated man in America right now? I want to say I think he's... I'll bet he job. feels great going to the bank. I'll bet he has exactly. no problem with he's, it. As he's, <laughs> as, he's count, as he's looking at that check from Disney from Mickey right. Mouse, I think he's doing okay. He's feeling okay. I wish I had a check from Mickey Mouse to take to the bank. Right. But yeah, you know, so but he is definitely a punchable face. Uh, I think it's done. It's done by design. They, they, you know, they wanted us to be like, this is not Steve Rogers, but this is our new, you know, Captain America and John Walker, who is, you know, in the comic books as U.S. Yeah. agent. Uh, so yep. You guys want to look at that, you know, um, and kind of check out. Um, he was up, you know, U.S. Agent. I will link to the. I, yeah, I will okay. link to U.S. Agent in the group as well. Follow our, is, follow our pages for you guys. You know, so this is Wyatt go, Russell, right? That's who this is. It's Wyatt yeah, Russell. Is Wyatt that Russell. is Wyatt Russell. So he okay. is U.S. agent from the comics. I will go ahead and put some information in the Walt's Apartment podcast follow, behind join, the lamp group. Yeah. So, yeah, join our group. Join group. Yeah. See, I yeah. don't know. That doesn't yep, do there it for he me. Is. Yeah. Nope. But, but honestly, he doesn't look as bad as he does in that dang costume. 
But yeah. like David said, it was done. It was done to give you Purposely. that face to hate. Because we, was, because yeah. we're supposed to want Sam to have the mantle. Right. We're supposed to want Sam to have the mantle. And you see, we're not in the, supposed to want this random guy to have the mantle. You see, because, in the previews, obviously this happens because you know. Yeah, see, we did. Yeah, Sam gets the shield back and is practicing with it, so that's got to happen I think, soon. All that. I, so. I think we had more of a, a real kind of visceral response when we got to. We, we saw the speech that Sam gave when he retired. <laughs> I'll be crystal. I love it. Uh, when we retired, uh, when when he gave the speech about retiring Sam's uh, shield, I mean, Steve Rogers' shield, Captain America's shield, and letting that moniker kind of die out. So w- when we saw the new Captain America and we saw that they disrespected Sam Wilson and they gave it to this new guy, which it was not a fluke. They were waiting they all they were missing was the shield element and stuff. So when they so when the guy in the museum told them thank you for you know doing this, he already had Captain uh, the new Captain America placement already ready, already trained. I don't. It makes think me that, sick. Yeah, it, yeah. I don't think that they were like, oh, now we have the shield. Well, well let's let's have somebody. They already had that person in the wings waiting. They're waiting for the shield. They got the shield, and basically just kind of screwed over Sam, ignored his uh, amazing speech about just retiring it, getting new heroes and new, you know, new things. And then, boom, right there. That's where that kind of, that uh, Sam had a little bit of regret. He was watching that happen, and he's like, damn, I gave up that mantle, and this is what they did. With At that point, Sam's probably thinking these villains that Torres is chasing down might have the right idea. Maybe, yeah. I mean, so, I probably not, but at this point, it's like screw the government. They're they're just thinking, like he is tied to the emotional trauma that is accompanied by the shield. Mm-hmm. He the mantle. He wants the mantle to be done, and the mantle is not done for the U.S. government. And he's very so. This is where him and Cap are very much. Like. They're on the side of what's right and what's wrong. The government. They realize quickly that the government is not always about what's right and what's wrong. And so this is why you know Cap had disagreements with the government and stuff, and we're seeing the same kind of uh, feelings that Falcon is kind of displaying, and he's going to probably display further through it as the episodes kind of progress. He's going to have this kind of he has a moral compass that supersedes what the government's moral compass is. Unlike Bucky, yeah, Bucky's a soldier. And that's, Bucky, yeah, Bucky is buckles, what we struggling. want him to be. Yeah, he's, he's what he's what the government wants him to be. Right. Not the government. At at that point, like the beginning of his career, he was what the government wanted him to be. Right. Then he was what Hydra wanted him to be. Right. And now, now he's, he's trying just, to figure out himself. He's trying to figure now it he's out. just screwed up. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but a Falcon can probably bring him out of that. Yep. Well, That's Cap, my hope. Cap did. I think in this, I think we're going to see this relationship for him because Cap believed in Bucky. He understood what happened to him on both sides. I hope sides we get flashbacks. Government. So I think Falcon is going to take the role of Captain. That that relationship is going to be built off of 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 you know Falcon uh, Sam Wilson having that kind of moral center that is you know admirable or, or emulates what Captain what Steve Rogers was and stuff. And then that's I think that's what's going to they're going to solidify that bond between uh, Bucky and, and Sam. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I can't wait for episode two to come out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already just like, uh, is it is it is it midnight Thursday? Because right. we're on the West Coast, we get it. Are you fiending for it like you are, Wandavision? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm always gonna. It takes a while to break me of my bingey kind of qualities I have here. Can I plug Dizology? Oh, absolutely. Yes, please, please do. Please, okay. Please, please. So last night we had an episode where we uh, Rachel and David and I recorded an episode. David joined us and I explained to them how Marvel right now by releasing weekly rather than all at once is actually increasing the gamma waves in our brain, which clear the sludge and actually can help with your brain health. Um, because they're like stimulating it. conversations like this. Yep. So like this conversation we've had for the past hour now has actually charged our brains mm-hmm. instead of just us binge watching and not having this conversation and talking about it for an hour after talking about the whole season. So now we're going to get all of this extra time with our gamma waves clearing the sludge in our brains. So yep. if you haven't listened to that episode, head on over to Dizology Podcast and listen to episode 12. You better. You better do Worth it. Worth the listen. Check it out. It was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm we're looking nerds. forward to it. it we're nerds. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> so, David, wrapping up here, what was your overall thought of the first episode? 
Oh, I loved it. It was definitely, it started out like a Marvel movie. I, yes. Yeah. And yeah. oh man, I'm talking about, I mean, TV, you know, WandaVision, you can easily, and I hate comparing it to because they're very different elements yeah. of the universe. But, um, but they're setting up the same phase. Correct. They're setting up the same phase, but you get that kind of television because it was designed to be television for the WandaVision at first. Here, this was like, I, I'm at the movie theater. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, and I'm watching a Marvel movie. I've been, oh, yes, it was nice. Oh, yeah, I agree completely. They know how to provide a cinematic experience for us, mm-hmm. even when we're just in our own living rooms, sitting in pajamas. Um, I really, truly do love the, like, psychological background. I do, the, too. Like, the, mm-hmm. the trauma that they're showing us. I love that they're showing us how they're coping. They're showing us how they're trying to, like, monetize their lives mm-hmm. because they don't have that right now. I love that we're getting to see that. That's not something we're used to from the MCU. We're not used to seeing their regular everyday lives. We're used to seeing them as superheroes. Right. You're, they're just, and you know. Honestly, I find it so relatable at this point in time with everything we're dealing with in 2020 and 2021 um, with the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that so many Americans are going to be drawn to so many people around the world, even because it's, it's a world, it's a international pandemic. We are drawn to the same issues. And I think it is an amazing thing that Marvel is showcasing what grief is like, what healing is like, what trauma is like. I'm always going to be one to say, Hey, you need to do the work to find your inner child so that you can be the best version of yourself. That's what they're telling Bucky. That's what, you know, they're, yep. that's the lesson Sam's going to have to learn. They're all going to have to learn this in this post blip life. So it's, it's something that I think we all need right now. It's refreshing to see that, Hey, even superheroes can struggle. Yep. yep. Absolutely. That's, that's a perfect wrap up. Um, either one of you have anything else you want to add about the episode? What did you think, Sean? I, I mean, the, the same kind of thing. I just uh, not knowing a lot about this. I was dr- I was drawn into it immediately the, the, when it started. You know, I I love the fact that when they said, I, "I I'm a huge fan of Sam now. I think he's a badass and I love him." Like when the guy said, "Hey, be subtle," and he does the puts his arms out, and falls out out, 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 out the plane. That was like that, that was like, like Nicholas they're... Cage from like um, Face Off to me. Like it's just, like when they're like, you. "He doesn't need a parachute." Yeah, Captain right. America. No? Did that. Captain yeah, America. Right. Yeah, ca- yeah, Cap does Cap did that. And they're like, he doesn't need a parachute. And they're like, no. I thought, you know, Sam was such a real person. And I thought uh, the a line that stuck with me, which I thought was funny, was, you know, his sister says, he said, We got to go even an hour to get there. And he's and I and I I'm always one that likes to get there early. I'm always do things to be there. And he says, You're either early or you're late. There's no in between. And I thought, I'm like, that is the, the, you, that's the, that's you the and me both, brother. Thing, man. You know, I thought that was so good. I'm like, okay, I really, really love Sam. And Anthony Mackey's birthday is September 23rd, which is my birthday. So I'm is a huge really? fan. I'm a huge fan of this. I, I think it is. I'm almost positive it is, but I'm a huge fan of this guy now. And I'm I want I want to learn more about him and have I like I said all the memes that I watch and stuff? Have you guys seen the meme of, you know, they said obviously Sam brought one thing that Captain that that Captain America had and it was his butt, and they showed a picture of of him in the oh, costume God. as well. I have yeah. not. No, I okay. have not I'll seen that. Meme. that so you have you to too. share these memes I'll with us in our in our group too. chat. Oh, but well. I also do like that. I think I feel like my intuition is telling me that the show is going to awaken some issues. Um, it's going to bring in in to play some of the societal issues that we're seeing in mm-hmm. the United States right now. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like we're going to see a lot more of like, like I said, Sam's sister, she's woke. Yep. Like she is like the perfect Black Lives Matter spokesperson mm-hmm. for me. Like when I see when I see her, I'm like, this girl gets it. Like yep. she is she is what Black Lives Matter embodies. And um, I, I think that Marvel is ready to tackle some of those oh issues. for sure for disney sure. is starting to tackle some of those multicultural issues disney is not showing fear right now no it's good um, it's it's good stuff and i mean i love it because it's giving me dysology content and i'm like listen <laughs> like like we just talked i was explaining to david last night like with the racial tropes and soul and how you know why can't we just leave a black man in his body? Why does he have to become an animal? I think that Marvel's ready to tackle that. And I think that Sam and his sister are going to be mm-hmm. an embodiment of that. I, th- I feel it coming from this series. I agree. I was not, I was not as excited about this one. Honestly, I didn't, I 
I did not think that something could top what we just saw, but I'm right. I'm right. I'm like David. I'm like, is it freaking, is it, is it, is it Friday morning yet? Cause I thought it was really, really good. And it just, it's this drew you in right away. So oh, yeah. like when, like David, for you, when she is sitting at the bank, mm-hmm. did you get the vibes that she was like feeling injustice? Well, she, she, she knew, I mean, here's the thing. She, she knew what was coming. Like her brother was, was naive because he, he rightfully. He doesn't know the world we live in. Well, he, he knows, but he thinks, I mean, which so often this happens uh, when you think that you're, I'll give you an example, um, a celebrity, uh, like, you know, whether he's a athlete or, or, or famous black actor. I'm going to give you, this example. We just had a celebrity who took their, their little cousin or nephew, it was, to Walt Disney World and expected <laughs> they didn't have to wear a mask. Mm. And, and granted, I mean, the the little guy had, or the little guy or girl, I don't remember what it was, had autism, mm-hmm. and they thought they didn't have to wear a mask. Well, like, that's not the world we live in anymore. And just because you're a celebrity, you don't get that special treatment. If private property says you have to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. But if if that's where you're going with this, is, like, celebrities think that they deserve special treatment? Nope, nope, not where I'm going with this. So, um, ah, and I well. get what you're saying. <laughs> just, um, it's, 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 it's a little bit like, like this. Um, you... You, he grew up, you know, with his family. He he knows about um, all of the um, you know disadvantages and issues and stuff that you know, people had in in our world. He's not he's he's not uh, naive to that. He felt he paid his dues, and he's big. Uh, he's uh, famous enough. He paid a debt to this world by saving, help saving it. That people can look past that. He was in. She was operating in reality of people didn't change. Like mm-hmm. no matter what you think, what you've done for what you think they think. So done like for them, he felt society owed him something. That, well, at least owed them to be better than what they used to be. You yeah. know, not to treat not to treat him the way that he were used to being treated and stuff. And so he felt he had this kind of um, expectations of better. Uh, just better society, and he got remnants of the old society. And the sister already knew, like the world, regardless of what you did for the world, you saved or you helped save the world, and everything else. Society is still people are still people, and and people haven't changed that much and stuff. So she, that's that's where that was coming from and stuff. Was like he was like, yeah, I'm I'm Falcon. I helped save the world. Like everyone, I should be good. Like I should be, you know, not not you know treated better but you guys should be better like mm-hmm. as far as how you treat me and the fact is the only thing he got was a little bit like hey can i get he got kind of the douchebag kind of experience like hey can i get a selfie can i get an autograph like hey what's oh uh yeah you have no i'm sorry no no loan denied i don't really care that you're falcon right so, like i care because it gives me clout right. but i don't care enough to give you clout no, no. So, so yeah. So, and sister, she lived through this whole thing. Nothing. So she saw the world for what it was and what it is, and that's why she was having that kind of uh, that reaction, back and forth, the yeah. reaction and stuff. To, and then she, she knew, she knew going in, this wasn't going to work. So this is something that I love about David's personality is, I, I am not <laughs> like I love the Marvel tribe, and I love my podcasting experiences because. I'm not used to people challenging me and it gives me these people who care about me who are also willing to challenge me. Um, Cause usually I'll sit back and I'll, I'll just like reflect on things. But like when I get to talking on a mic, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to say what I think. And if someone's going to challenge yeah, me, they're going to challenge me. And I love this. I love this about our shows. Like and hopefully that's, you- that's the premise of Dizology. My, my podcast I do with my co-host Rachel. So I love that you just said that. And you told me, no, that's not what I was thinking, Sam. You would so have David. loved Chris then. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I, I, mean, I, in our I, place. I mean, I love Bill. But you Bill do res- is constantly like Sam, get it together. Right, and you, and you do it respectfully. You do it without love. You don't you don't do it out of like like oh you're stupid or you're du- or nothing like that. No, I, I'm I'm and I, I hope when I get challenged, it's done out of you know the same way I would do it to someone else and stuff. Like it's just it's out of love and it's just sharing a different perspective and stuff. It and, is, and, and it's yeah. it's to help make the world a better place. Like yeah. we all want. To give everybody different lenses to view things through so that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have unique experiences. We understand all the experiences that other people are experiencing so that we can have a more cohesive environment in our world. So I appreciate everything that we get from the Marvel tribe. 
love our group. Sorry to turn this into a Dizology episode, Sean. No, it's all good. It's all good. Just like we say at the beginning of every episode, one team, one love. Marvel Tribe. Mar- Marvel Tribe. Good night, all. I, I want that beat. Come back. Sorry. <laughs> sorry.